All right, so let's talk a little bit about Western civilization. What is Western civilization? So first is, what is civilization? I mean, a civilization is a, a, a culture, a, uh, a, a, um, a geographic area in which significant achievements are made, at least relative to what is going on for the rest of mankind. So civili a civilization is a place where real achievements are being achieved <laughs> um, in comparison to everything going on around, uh, around them. Right? So we can talk about a Mesopotamian uh, civilization, ancient civilization, because you know, this is where I think, you know, correct me if my history is wrong, you know, writing and, and farming and, and other aspects other achievements, uh, law, first, first examples of a legal system we can find in uh, Mesopotamia. Right? Uh, Egypt is a, is a civilization because it achieves certain things technologically. We, we might say it's, 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 um, it's limiting, that is, that the, uh, that the civilization is limited, the achievements are limited, but it is a civilization. Of course, Greek civilization is maybe... Uh, the epitome of example of this because it surpasses Egyptian, it surpasses the Mesopotamian, it becomes the leading civilization in that the achievements of the Greeks, whether in art, in philosophy, and thinking, and in science, in, in politics, in almost every realm of human endeavor, exceed anything else that the world has seen. Rome is definitely a civilization, and, and there's very little competition. There's, there's civilization in in China, again, there are achievements being achieved in China during certain eras. So, uh, civilization is the sum of an achievement of a particular people, culture, area, geographic area. And Western civilization is the achievements of the peoples primarily identified by uh, Western Europe and uh, the United States, although, you know, so Western Europe and, and some of the areas that were colonized by Western Europe, although, as we'll see, I think what makes Western civilization unique is that because it is a civilization that is fundamentally based on ideas, it is not limited by geography, it is not limited to a people, it is not limited to a place, but it is something that can transverse that place. It can go beyond that place. It can go, in a sense. You can, you can have Western civilization in any geographic area by any people in any place in the world. It doesn't have to be in the West. It doesn't have to be Europeans. It can be anybody. So what is Western civilization? What are these achievements? Well, if we look at the achievements, well, well, first, when does Western civilization happen? I mean, there is no Western civilization before the Renaissance. There are some centers of learning. There's stuff going on. There's some innovation in business, but there's very little. Life is horrific. There's very little achievement qua human beings during the period before the Renaissance in Europe. Indeed, there's much more achievement, science, scientific achievement, literary achievement, um, uh, 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 philosophical achievement, scientific achievement going on in the East, in the, in the Muslim uh, world, in the, you know, certainly from the 900s, 800s, 900s, 900s through the, the 1200s, particularly if you include Spain in that. So, there is no Western civilization. One wouldn't consider the West civilized before the Renaissance. There was Islamic civilization, and there was barbarism. And the West was, the Christian West during this period, was clearly part of a barbaric barbarism. Now, out of this barbarism arose a civilization, primarily with the beginnings of the Renaissance. That civilization manifested itself during the Renaissance in primarily art, the beginnings of science, the beginnings of philosophy, particularly at the, towards the end 
of, uh, of the Renaissance and into the Baroque period, there is real philosophic beginnings of real philosophical innovation. Suddenly, art goes through the roof, uh, the innovations of art. But that is all a product of, you know, the 15th century and on. There is no Western civilization before that. The same people live in the West. To some extent, the same political authorities are in the West. But there's nothing civilized about it. There are no great achievements. And, and one of the things Sullivan mentions is this grand cathedral that I, I don't have the dates on what it was built, but uh, my guess is it was built before the Renaissance. And I don't consider that an achievement. And I don't consider that enough to qualify civilization. Civilization requires more than a building, particularly more than a building whose only purpose is a glory to God, in other words, and is built on the backs of the poor peasantry, the poor workers of the time. It, much more to me, is like the pyramids, which, yes, you can say a, a, a symbol of, civil, of Egyptian civilization, not a good civilization in particular, and Egypt, if they'd only built the pyramids, we wouldn't be that impressed. It's everything else that they did. And again, not a particularly good civilization. A pretty primitive civilization. A pretty backward civilization. As compared to what comes immediately afterwards, which is Greece. So the real achievements of the West, the real civilizational achievements, the, 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 the cultural achievements only start... Uh, from the Renaissance on. And then primarily in the arts, then slowly into science, and ultimately into every aspect of human life. Now, what marks Western civilization is, a, 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 is in a sense, a connection to the Greeks and a connection to particular view that Greece had of mankind. So if you look at the art of the Renaissance, the art of the Renaissance is clearly heavily influenced by Greek art, by what they knew of Greek art. And what does Greek art express? What well, it expresses a certain view of, of man a certain view of human beings. It is a view that human beings are heroic, capable, competent, able, efficacious in this world. It is a this-worldly view that you can see in, in Michelangelo's David, which I talked about in the debate and I've talked about many times on the show, but you can see it in Michelangelo's Pieta, which is a religious topic, subject, but a secular theme, mother and a son who's died, but the son is heroic, the son is magnificent. And the mother, sad and proud, devastated and proud <laughs> of her son. It's so touching, it's so moving, it's so emotional, it's so powerful. But each figure, the mother, Mary, and Jesus, are individuals with individual characteristics, individual facial expressions, individual bodies. Jesus is a Greek god, a heroic body of a god. And you see this in the Renaissance, even when they paint religious themes. The people are individuals. The people have emotions. The people have character. As compared for example, to the pre-Renaissance art, which is flat, no emotion, no character. Everybody looks the same. There's no distinction. There's no heroism. There's no efficaciousness. There's just people, usually in very religious poses, flat, unmoving, unengaged. So there's a massive shift in Western culture from pre-Renaissance to Renaissance. And what characterizes it is primarily viewing the individual as worthwhile. 
And this is the idea they get from the Greeks. They get it from Greek art, and they get it from Greek philosophy. Even Greek philosophy, I would, and we would maybe disagree with, let's say Plato, has an enormous respect for the, for the individual and for the human mind and for the individual's pursuit of happiness. So we have, we have a culture, a civilization emerging during the Renaissance with an implicit, because it's in the art, it's not necessarily anywhere else, it's in the art, respect for the individual, an implicit respect for happiness, an implicit respect for reason, still implicit, not philosophical. But suddenly there, you know, if, again, I, I've recommended this before, but I'll recommend it again. Uh, Walter Isaacson's book on uh, Leonardo da Vinci is fabulous, partially because it brings out, it brings out the, the, um, the fact that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci was this amazing uh, scientist, innovator, engineer, but scientist. And that he was respected as such, that there was a respect for his outlandish character. He was quite, he was quite something in terms of his just behavior and character. And for his mind, a massive respect for his mind, for his scientific mind, for his mathem mathematical mind, for his engineering mind. That's new. Nobody cared 200 years earlier. There's a good chance he would have been burnt at the stake 200 years earlier. So, Western civilization is born out of certain ideas that they accept from the Greeks. And it's born more implicitly than explicitly. It's born in the art before it's born in the philosophy. Because the art is a consequence of philosophy they are reading from Greece. The Plato, the Aristotle. Aristotle more than anything. And this respect for the individual and respect for reason is manifest now in the sculpture, in the painting of the era. And this is, this is a period where you also get, you, you know, uh, Andrew Sullivan mentioned Shakespeare, but you also get Shakespeare. And Shakespeare, again, is philosophically terrible. Right? And this is the problem, that, that the, implicit, the implicit ideas can be recreated in the sculpture and the paintings. But when it comes to literature, they don't have the philosophical grounding in order to manifest them. So again, they remain implicit. But in Shakespeare, these ideas are implicit in his characterization, in his interesting characters, in his understanding of evil, his understanding of, 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 you know, the choices people make. There's a certain determinism in Shakespeare. There's, there's a big chunk of determinism in Shakespeare, just like there is in Greek plays. But you can see there are larger-than-life characters for good and evil. And there is a beautiful language in the service of all this. So clearly a massive achievement. I mean, the, the, the plays of Shakespeare are some of the greatest achievements of, of world literature. And it's no accident that they come during this period. The Renaissance, late Renaissance, into the Baroque. So, but from the beginning, Western civilization is about the individual. And it's only in the Enlightenment, and, and in a sense even a Reformation, if you will, is an expression of this. It's, it's a rebellion against authority, at least worldly authority. It's a rebellion within the religion saying, within Christianity saying, but I can have an individual connection to God. I don't need the Pope. I don't need the hierarchy. I don't need the priests. I can communicate with God directly. Now that is a huge step forward. Now, Protestantism is, is, is very problematic from lots of other respects. But the idea 
of the individual's, in a sense, responsibility for his own religion is a powerful one. And then, of course, we get the Enlightenment. The, the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment puts, in a sense, at least attempts to put philosophy to this spirit. The idea of individual rights, which formalizes the idea of individualism politically, and, and a hints of a moral of morality and, and the idea of the pursuit of happiness and the virtue of the pursuit of happiness. The idea of reason, the efficaciousness of reason, the importance of reason, the idea that one knowledge comes from reason, all of these are achievements in the Enlightenment. And that, that Enlightenment is what makes possible the Declaration of Independence, it makes possible America, and it makes possible the Industrial Revolution which politically and economically are the great achievements of Western civilization. Western civilization is the greatest civilization and the, because it has the greatest achievements in human history, whether it's artistic achievements from the sculpture painting of the early Renaissance through Michelangelo, through Leonardo and Raphael, through Bernini, through the Baroque, into the... 18th century and 19th century and the 19th century sculpture and painting and literature to Hugo and, and ultimately the architecture, as I mentioned on the show, of, um, of Frank Lloyd Wright. All of that emphasizing individualism, the individual at kind of an emotional, preconceptual level. And so all of that, and then, and then through all that is the second thread. It was the, you know, respect for reason. The idea of the importance of science. Again, going from Michael from from Michelangelo from not Michelangelo from Leonardo to Galileo to Copernicus, Kepler to Newton, and the whole scientific revolution that follows. That's Western civilization. And that leads to a politics, a certain political creation. The respect for the individual, the respect for the human mind, leads to the Declaration of Independence, which unleashes political freedom upon the world and brings us the Industrial Revolution. So artistically, the greatest achievements ever, right? from the Renaissance through the, through the, the, the 19th century, in music, in, in literature, in sculpture, in painting, and everything. Politically, the greatest achievement was the creation of the United States of America. Economically and politically, capitalism and the Industrial Revolution are its great achievements. That is what Western civilization is. It is that respect for the individual and for reason and everything that that produces, which is all the wealth we have in the world today, Spiritual and material. Yet today, Western civilization is under attack. It's under attack with the idea from all, all, all kinds of directions. The egalitarians hate it because they say you, there's nothing better than anything else. Well, and even Andrew Sullivan, to some extent, suggested during our debate that, well, life kind of sucks today. Hunter-gatherers maybe had it better. They lived longer, healthier, happier lives. Really? <laughs> really? That all the technology and the wealth and success that we've had only brings problems, no benefits. Really? So there's this idea that, no, all cultures are the same. All cultures are equal. Cultures that promote human life cultures that develop the spirit, that develop, that make us rich, that provide us with technology, that provide us with medicine, that provide us with all these things. They equal two cultures that abuse women, that engage in general, female genital mutilation, that engage in women not being able to drive and not being able to own property or, 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 or cultures that where people still go out and gather food, that have no surplus, that live in huts. All of those are the same. There's no difference. So there's this egalitarian perspective, and we'll talk about in a minute where that comes from. Right. But there's also those who would say, 
to some extent, uh, Andrew. Yeah, well, Western civilization is too material, and, 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 you know, where is that deep religiosity that was so wonderful during the Dark Ages? And there's a religionist attack today on Western civilization. We've taken it too far. I, we saw that when I talked about some of the debates within the conservative movement, primarily out of the Catholics, the first things, that say there's too much individualism today in the West. There's too much respect for the individual. Then there's the left criticism. Western civilization was built in slavery. There's the whole 1619 project out of the New York Times, which I'll have to do a show on, but everything's, everything is just, everything was built in slavery and colonialism. The West did nothing, achieved nothing, produced nothing that is not on the backs of Native Americans, blacks, Indians, Indians from India, colonialism, and so on. And of course, the attacks are much deeper than that. We have attacks on the two foundational elements of Western civilization. And these are the two enemies. The real enemies of Western civilization are those who reject reason and those who reject individualism and the individual's moral right to pursue his own happiness. And they come in the form of mystics who attack reason, mystics who could be religious. So there's a growing movement today to present the Dark Ages as nice. Oh, huge achievements. Christian civilization, wonderful, just as good as the Renaissance. Renaissance is not a change. Um, so, so there's the religious element, and you're seeing that, again, rise up today, I think, primarily on the right. But then you see the secular religions. And what makes the religions is their rejection of reason. And it was interesting that Andrew Sullivan actually recognized that these were secular religions. Communism, fascism, really all forms of tribalism, intersectionality, much of what the left preaches today, much of what the nutty left preaches today is religion in the sense that it is not backed by argument, it is not backed by reason, it is not backed by logic. And just like a religion, it typically is, like environmentalism is a good example. There's original sin, there's commandments, there's a God, there's sacrifice. So any attack of reason, against reason, whether it comes in the form of Marx or Hegel, or comes in the form of, of intersectionality feminism, or, you know, race, uh, race, what's it, critical racial theory, or whatever it's called, or whether it comes in the, in the form of white supremacists. All of those are fundamentally anti-Western civilization. All of those reject a fundamental premise, cause, foundation, of what Western civilization relies on and is based on. Somebody says the volume is low. Is your volume low? If anybody, anybody can indicate. For some reason, I don't have a chat on Facebook, but on, on uh, YouTube is the... It's fluctuating only because I move in and out and I yell and then stop yelling and stuff like that. But is the, is the volume low? I, uh, I don't... The volume is... I think it's... I mean, it, the settings are the same. It should be good. Okay, the volume's fine, everybody says. So the enemy is the enemy. The enemy is the enemy and reason. It's, it's, it always has been. So in that sense, in that sense, I believe Christianity is anti-Western civilization. It's an enemy of Western civilization in that it rejects the application of reason to all human issues. I think communism is not as many people, many, many people consider like communism, oh, that's the ba bad part of Western civilization. No, that is the forces that are always around in our culture that hate Western civilization, that reject Western civilization, fighting against it. Fascism, tribalism, 
white supremacism, the radical left, these are all anti-Western forces. And in that sense, Western civilization has always had inside of it, at its core, among its people, these ideas, the anti-Western ideas, have always been present. Primarily religion. As Michelangelo is sculpting the David, he is also a, he becomes more and more deeply religious as he gets older, but he, he is religious. He has within him the ideas that destroy David, that destroy the ability of anybody to produce a David, of anybody to enjoy a David, of anybody to appreciate a David, or understand a David. And indeed, I think real Christians, when they look at David, yeah, they can you know, relates to some biblical hero or something, but they don't get the profound metaphysical meaning of the sculpture. And their enjoyment of it is limited. I think that's true of anybody who does not believe human beings are heroic and have heroic potential. So the enemies of Western civilization are always being amongst us and being a part of the heroes of Western civilization. You've got the great scientists who are also very religious. You've got some of the founding fathers who are also very religious. On the one hand, writing that you have an inalienable right to pursuit of happiness, and on the other hand, justifying altruism in its Christian sense. So, communism, fascism, all the mystical forces, ideas, people out there, even though geographically they're in our midst, they're in the West. They're surrounded by civilization. And to some extent, they might even be contributing to that civilization. To the extent that they take those ideas seriously, to that extent, they are the enemies of civilization. The enemies of civilization. So, of course, that's at the level of reason. The same thing goes for individualism. To the extent that we revert to tribalism, to the respect that we respect tribalism, to the extent that there are tribes among us and people among us who push for tribalism of whatever sort, of the intersectionality sort, of the, you know, what's it called, the uh, racial identity sort of the left, or of the white supremacist sort of the right. To the extent that people are tribal, they are anti-Western. They are rejecting the fundamental premise of Western civilization. To the extent that they play nation above self, tribe among self, collective above self, race above self, ethnic group above self, they are rejecting the very heart, the very idea of Western civilization. So the enemies of Western civilization amongst us are anybody who holds tribal and mystical ideas. And one of the reasons we are seeing our civilization in decline is because many people around us, left and right, hold ideas that undercut, that are anti, fundamentally anti the West. And this goes back to a theme I, I, I in a sense, keep, re re keep returning to which is that our job is to save the Enlightenment because the Enlightenment is the philosophical foundation of Western civilization. It's not to teach every Western thinker who ever lived. It's not to embrace every Western artist, so-called artist who ever lived. Kandinsky is not an artist. He doesn't contribute. He's not contributed to Western civilization. It's that we need to identify the core ideas, the core products, the core creations of the West. And that is what we should celebrate and teach. And philosophically and politically, it's the Enlightenment. And then we need to improve on it because the Enlightenment has been attacked consistently from Kant to Rousseau, from Rousseau to Kant and to Hegel to Schopenhauer to Marx to Nietzsche. 
the Enlightenment is under massive attack. And it is only Ayn Rand who stands in defense of the Enlightenment. It is only Ayn Rand who stands in defense of Western civilization. So if you care about Western civilization, if you get a sense that there's something good here, that there's something worth preserving here, that there's something important here, that what needs to be defended, what needs to be promoted, what needs to be brought into the world are the ideas of Ayn Rand. The ideas of Ayn Rand, the great art of the Renaissance through the 19th century, and the great thinkers of the Enlightenment. That is That is the, what it's going to take to defend Western civilization. No, no shortcuts. And indeed, part of that defense is going to mean a rejection of religion, a rejection of communism, a rejection of race as meaningful, as having any meaning, as contributing anything to civilization. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity, go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...